The United States will move ahead with the transfer of F-16 jets to Turkey just a day after Ankara gave the green light for Sweden to join the world's largest military alliance. Kirby El Trinidad has the news. As Turkey ended his opposition to Sweden's NATO membership, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced it is ready to discuss Ankara's long-awaited desire to purchase 40 F-16 jets from the United States, a move opposed by U.S. lawmakers for several reasons including Erdogan's resistance on Stockholm's NATO bid. In October 2021, Turkey requested to buy 40 new Lockheed Martin F-16 fighter jets as well as 80 modernization kits for its existing warplanes from the United States to upgrade its aging fleet. The deal estimated at $20 billion was supported by the Biden administration. Some lawmakers from the U.S. Congress, however, have opposed the F-16 sale due to Turkey blocking Sweden's NATO membership, its human rights record, and its relations with Greece, among other concerns. Both sides rejected any suggestion that F-16 sale was linked to Ankara's approval of Sweden's NATO accession. The Greek government, on the other hand, is following closely developments amid knowledge of Ankara's long-awaited plan to purchase F-16 jets from the United States. Reporting from Sweden, this has been Kirby Trinidad, SM9 News. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom's Defense Secretary Ben Wallace made a suggestion saying that Ukrainian officials should show gratitude for weapons donated to them. Jane Kodnita for the rest of this report. UK Defense Secretary Ben Wallace suggested that Ukraine should adopt a less demanding tone when it comes to speaking to other countries that are providing them weapons to fight against Russia. Wallace suggested that Ukraine should show more gratitude for Western support and stop treating allies and to stop treating them like the online delivery service Amazon. Wallace's remarks quoted by the media was made during an event on the Vilnius NATO summit sidelines on Wednesday. Wallace is known to be a vocal supporter of Ukraine. However, he said that it would help Ukraine's cause if they displayed more gratitude. According to the UK Defense Minister, end quote, Sometimes you are asking countries to give up their own stocks. Sometimes you have to persuade lawmakers on Capitol Hill in America. You have to persuade doubting politicians in other countries that it is worth it, end of quote. Wallace said he heard complaints from American counterparts that Kyiv was treating their country like the Amazon store despite providing billions of dollars worth of military assistance. Wallace confirmed that this was indeed true and that he had been personally subjected to such treatment by Kyiv officials. He then recalled driving 11 hours to meet with a delegation in June but only to be given a list of requests. It can be noted that U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan made a similar comment in Lithuania, saying that, quote, The American people do deserve a degree of gratitude from the U.S. government for their willingness to step up and aid Ukraine, and from the rest of the world as well. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky changed his tune after reports say that Western leaders told him to cool down. Following Wallace's remarks, Zelensky at a press conference said that he has always been thankful to the West for providing weapons, ammo, and all other assistance. In a press conference, Zelensky said, end quotes, I don't clearly understand the questions. We have always been grateful and always are grateful. I simply don't know how else we should be grateful. We can wake up in the morning and thank the minister. Have him write to me how to be grateful and I will be grateful, end of quote. Zelensky has criticized the U.S. and its allies for not providing enough support or for providing it too slowly. It can be remembered that Zelensky blamed the delays in providing military assistance to them. He earlier said Ukraine had hoped to launch its counteroffensive against Russia much sooner. However, it was delayed due to the lack of Western-supplied weapons and allowed Russia to create stronger defenses. The Ukrainian president also criticized NATO leaders for failing to provide a timeline or a roadmap for Ukraine's accession to NATO, as Kyiv still needs to meet some conditions to qualify as a NATO member. To this, Zelensky called it as unprecedented and absurd. Reporting, this has been Jane Konita, Azimunai News. The UN Security Council announced that it would convene a meeting Thursday to discuss North Korea's latest intercontinental ballistic missile launch. Hence, Marshall files this report. North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile or ICBM launch Wednesday 
as the country's fourth this year that is in breach of Security Council resolutions. The launch was confirmed by North Korea state media, Korean Central News Agency, or KCNA. And due to this, the UN Security Council will publicly convene an urgent meeting. The assembly comes following requests from Albania, France, Malta, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. According to reports, the missile was fired at around 10 a.m. from Pyongyang, with a projectile flying about 1,000 kilometers at a maximum altitude of 6,600 kilometers before landing in waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. Some experts claim that the North likely launched its developmental road mobile Hwasong-18 ICBM, a type of solid fuel weapon that is hard to detect and intercept compared to its liquid fuel ICBMs. Previously, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un claimed that the said missile was the most powerful in its nuclear forces. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the launch and called for North Korea to comply with its international obligations and resume dialogue. This is Hans Marshall reporting, SMNL News.